what's up youtube it's your girl peach and i am back thank you so much for tuning into my channel if you're new this is a channel where i showcase my lifestyle and i talk about my spirituality because god can make a difference so today we're going to talk about a really popular topic and i'm not going to take a really long time I don't want to take much of your time, but I just want to address this because I feel like a lot of people are not talking about the F word, okay? And the F word is holding a lot of us back in life, emotionally, physically, mentally, whatever direction you want to put it in, the F word is messing us up. And if you thought I was talking about a choice word, you need to wash and cleanse your mind because I'm actually talking about the act of forgiveness. Say it with me, forgiveness, okay? All right, so let's get into that. Why do I want to talk about forgiveness? Like, what is the importance of us forgiving others, right? But there's a scripture that tells us the key of why we should forgive others. So Matthew 6 verse 14 states that, we should forgive others so that our Father in heaven can also forgive us. So a lot of times we may not understand why we're not progressing in certain areas and we might think everything is okay, but we have not forgiven others. And therefore, if we have not forgiven others according to the word, the Father cannot forgive us. And I'm going straight from the Bible. If you don't agree with me, that's okay. If you have a different belief on forgiveness, that's also okay. I'm just sharing my view on forgiveness. And if you don't believe me, Mark 11 verse 25 can back it up. And it says we cannot receive forgiveness until we have forgiven others. So it's really important to learn how to forgive others so you yourself can be forgiven. So I want to talk about a really cool model that I had researched. And I have to give flowers where flowers are due. So this is called the REACH model. This was developed by Dr. Everett Worthington. And this is a model that teaches people about how to forgive. Like the process of how to give someone who has wronged you, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go through that. This process is not necessarily biblical or anything like that. But I do feel like sometimes in life we do need others to guide us and lead us for things that are not as easy for us to do. Just because it says to do something in the Bible doesn't mean like, okay, I'm just going to forgive. It's going to be easy. And then, you know, we're done. And you know what I mean? Sometimes it takes for us, someone to come to us and say, hey, you might be struggling with forgiveness. This is how you can do it. And I feel like because this method has helped me, I wanted to share it with somebody because maybe somebody else is having a hard time forgiving someone for a certain situation, for someone who has wronged them and just can't seem to really get past it. And we do want forgiveness from the Lord, right? So we have to learn how to forgive others so that we ourselves can be forgiven. And just so y'all know, I feel like Dr. Everett Worthington is a good source because he was studying the like the act of forgiveness for probably 30 years if not more. So I really do like put time and focus into seeing the best methods, seeing somebody who really put the time into look into this stuff. I know I haven't been thinking about forgiveness for 30 years, but I'm glad that he took the time to develop this for people like me and you and you know, maybe you could share with someone who may have a hard time forgiving and need help doing so. All right. So it is called the reach model. And the reach model is about how to forgive others, right? We're focusing on how to forgive others so that we ourselves can also to be forgiven. So it's a double whammy, right? So the R in the reach model stands for recalling the hurt. And I'm going to be reading from my notes, so don't mind. So it says to heal, you have to face the fact that you've been hurt. You have to make up your mind not to be nasty and hurtful, not to treat yourself like a victim, and not to treat the other person as a jerk. Make a decision to forgive. Decide that you are not going to pursue payback, but you will treat the person as a valuable person. That's big. So imagine someone walks up to me, we get into an altercation, they slap me in my face, this guy's basically saying to heal, first things first, you need to face the fact that you've been hurt. All right? So we're going through the process together, y'all. I've been slapped in my face. I am hurt by this individual because I just cannot believe that they have done this to me. But as a part of that, I have to say, you know what? This person is a human. I'm a human. Though they did something wrong, I'm going to commit to forgiving them. 
and making this an easier way for me to live instead of holding on to this hurt. I want to let it go, right? So that's basically what he's stating to do first. You're choosing to be literally... In essence, you're choosing to be the, the bigger person because you could be nasty to that person. You could slap them back. You could get back at them. You could be way more revengeful from than what they've done to you, you know? So, yeah. All right, so we've talked about the R, which is recalling the hurt. And now we're going to talk about the E, which is empathizing with your partner. So he talks about this exercise that you can do where basically you could sit in a chair, imagine that the person is across from you and talk to them like they're sitting right there listen the other day me and you got into a really heated argument and you slapped me and that really hurt my feelings like the pain that it felt to my pit face the shame the embarrassment um it just wasn't what i expected and you really hurt my feelings like that hit me emotionally empathize talk to the person Sometimes you can't reach them face to face, but you can always use that imaginary method to try to help you as well. Now, he doesn't state this in his model, but I do feel like if you have an opportunity to actually sit down and speak with a person, make sure first your heart is in the right place. Make sure that you're calm. Make sure that if you feel like you need support with you due to the person's nature, have someone there with you. Um, and just speak to the person. Another method that I've learned about is honestly, if you don't feel like you could like literally sit down and just talk to thin air, get out a piece of paper, write an imaginary letter to this person about what they've done to you, how much it hurts you, how much it upsets you, right? See if you could even also see how this person, why they did what they did to you. See if you could put that together, right? Maybe you might've slapped me because you didn't know a better way to release your anger because you didn't know how to walk away because maybe when you were a child, you didn't learn how to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. See if you could also put together why this person may have done what they did to you because sometimes that also helps us to heal with the hurt, right? So someone who may have slapped me, right? And in the case of an altercation, they may not have known a better way of how to get their expression across now is it acceptable obviously not but you do want to think about why this other person may have wronged you and taken that action against you as well because that helps you to kind of put things together right all right so we've talked about the r we've talked about the e right now we're going to talk about the a which is an altruistic gift. So altruism basically means being unselfish and devoted to the welfare of others, right? So you gotta think of forgiveness as a gift, right? We have all, all done something wrong to someone else. And if you haven't, kudos to you. But I believe that we have all done something wrong to someone else. And that person forgave us. And that gave us a sense of freedom, a sense of lightness, right? So you want to think about the fact that someone's already given you this gift at some point in your life. You can also replicate, reciprocate, and do the same thing for someone else, right? Because by forgiving unselfishly, he says you can give that same gift to someone who hurt you. Because at some point in your life, whether you've done it now, 10 years ago, you have hurt someone or done something to hurt someone, even if you don't know about it. That's the kicker. You might not even know that you hurt someone, but they walked away with that pain in their life or whatever the case may be and still chose to forgive you. I can tell you right now, there's a lot of people in my life who have made subliminal slick comments to me. I never went back and addressed them with that person but they hurt me for a long time until I chose to forgive and let that go and lighten my load I'm telling you when you learn the true act of forgiveness it's going to lighten you physically emotionally mentally I mean it's great so remember we're going to think about altruism because we want to be unselfish and we want to be devoted to the welfare of others all right, so we're going to talk about what I feel like is my favorite part in this model, which is C. And the C stands for commitment. You have to be committed to this forgiveness, right? So committing to this could be something as simple as like, yo, today I forgave XYZ for hitting me in my face 
on March 1st of 2017. I'm committing to that. I'm committing and I'm devoting myself to saying I forgive. Commitment is something that you don't want to back out of, right? So when you're committing to something, you're sticking to that. You're staying with that, right? So find something in your life that you can do that says I'm committing to forgive this person, right? This is the best part, honestly. It's just like marriage or a relationship, right? When you decide to commit to that person, that means there's nothing and no one else who should be able to break you apart. Now, this is just hypothetically speaking. Obviously, we know things happen. But what I'm saying is there should be nothing or no one that can break you apart from what you've committed to, right? So once you say, I'm committed, this is my person, that should be it, right? And we're done. So make sure you're seriously committing to forgiveness because you can do all the other three, three steps. You can recall the hurt. You can empathize. You can even feel like you're giving a gift. But if you don't commit to that whole process, you've wasted your time with everything else. Seriously, think about it. All right, so the final part of this model is H. Holds on to the forgiveness. When you commit to something, it's not just, I'm only committing to it today. For the rest of your life, you have to hold on to that same forgiveness and keep choosing to hold on to forgiveness even when those feelings start coming up again. Because guess what? We live a life where we are triggered, right? So maybe you might be watching a movie and you see someone slap someone and you're like, oh my God, I feel so hurt because I've been through that before and you want to get mad with that person all over again. But you have to hold on to that forgiveness do not give it away do not forget your commitment do not forget that you said you're not going to let that bother you anymore so you have to continue to hold on to it right hold on to that and so honestly guys those are the five steps in the reach model i really pray and hope that this can help someone out there because forgiveness is not an easy thing especially when someone has done something to really 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 hurt you like really hurt you and it may be bigger than a slap might be bigger than betrayal might be you know something deeper than that something really immoral but again we must learn to forgive others so that our father in heaven may forgive us